friends. So glad to see you. I'm Joni from Vintageress. I've been a reseller for over 11 years and I sell them mostly on Etsy. So you can check out my store by going to the links down below in the description. But today we're gonna to look at some Blue Mountain Pottery. I just think it's gorgeous. It's very mid-century. Let's have a look and see what we can learn about Blue Mountain Pottery. And if you like what you see, let me know in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe and give me that good old thumbs up. Okay, so let's look at some Blue Mountain Pottery. So the first things you see here is a pair of swans, swan planters. There's the sort of classic BMP Canada, Blue Mountain Pottery Canada um, logo on there. And the Blue Mountain Pottery was at the foot of the Blue Mountains in a town called Collingwood in Ontario, Ontario, Canada. It was started by Jozo Weld Welder, or Wielder in 1953. It closed in 2004. So anything that you find with that Blue Mountain Pottery stamp is going to be vintage, right? We know that it's, um, well, I guess next year, technically, it'll be vintage if it was made in 2004. But a lot of these pieces will be have made, you know, earlier as well. Here's another common logo that you see for Blue Mountain Pottery. So it's the three um, little trees and then the word Canada below. Always uh, Blue Mountain is, is red ware, so the, it's made of a red clay. So that's a cream and a sugar. I'll show you that too, because they're kind of fun. Um, so the cream and sugar. So they did, they did do service ware as well as um, figurines like the, the swans. Here's another thing that they made was uh, tankard. Now you can't see it, but it's Got a very faint um, mark on there of the three trees, but that is another Blue Mountain Pottery. Well, really well known for this glaze, this kind of green and black um, glaze that you see there. Here's some other little ones. So now the mark can be on there if uh, they aren't hollow, but some of the ones that are hollow would not have a mar mark and more likely would have a stamp. And I'll show you. I'll show you that a little bit later too, or stamp or a hang tag even. There's some herons. Those are kind of cute. Very mid-century modern in design. Um, there is a collector's club, and I'll put the link to the collector's club in the show notes or in the description below. Um, they, they have the, the glaze that you see. This glaze is called, a drip, well, a drip or free-flowing decorating. OK, so there's two different liquid glazes. So there's a light and a dark. So in this case, it would be the green. Looks like there's a bit of white in this one, too. And the black, like so the black. And they during firing, the glazes would sort of drip, creating this unique effect. So no two pieces would be exactly the same, right? Because the, of this kind of drip technique that they would use. Um, so the green and the black was made throughout the company's life. I've even got another piece here to show you a really cool sort of salmon. Um, he's kind of fun because he's, you see how he's kind of coming out of the water? Yeah, I think he's a neat piece. Now he's hollow, so he's not marked. So probably again, had a hang tag on him. Um, uh, in my Etsy store, I have a mother duck and a baby duck. So this is a the mother duck. Um, so they made the pieces that are, you know, this size and all the way down. Um, you know, these this is sort of getting close to their miniatures as well as, you know, these pieces here. I mean, that's a, a smaller piece for sure. But they also had really, really, really big pieces as well. Here's the biggest one that I've got. Let's make some room here. Make some room for the big one. <laughs> one of the big ones i guess oh see now he won't even get on the screen ah ah i'm not even in the screen hello hello <laughs> well yeah he's the biggest the tallest anyway so what would you say he is a duck a heron 
a swan. I'm not sure, but he is quite majestic, right? Love the drip work on that one for sure. But then it, as things sort of progressed with the company, so it started in 53, when they got into sort of the later 60s, mid to late 60s, they started introducing new colors. And one of the first things they started introducing was blues. So I'm going to show you a piece that is blue and black. So Mr. Penguin here is um, blue and black. And again, he's hollow. Um, really, really pretty design. So this is, again, the drip glaze technique. But now we're using black as the start, and then we're they're dripping it with the blue, the blue glaze. And again, everything, every one would be different. So this color is probably, I'm thinking it's the cobalt blue. Um, it's just also called granite. Um, they often called it granite as well. So you'll see it kind of called either one. And then slate is more of kind of a bluish gray. And I'll, I'll show you, I'll share my screen and I'll show you some other colors as well. So let me just do that. So here's a really good example of the blue granite. Um, so you can see how there's quite a bit of white here on this one. And it really kind of shows the granite kind of color that they, they called it that. So very similar to my penguin, but I think a little bit more white in there. And then they had reds and black. So you can see here that this cat is, you know, quite, quite handsome two-tone red drip on this one. Um, but that's not all. So there's here's red, it's just red. Um, you can see sort of a little bit of the undertone there as well. So, you know, this one is a really pretty one. And I'll put links to all of these listings in my video as well. So I want to credit the store owners for these. And hopefully too, you might want to support them by purchasing these and adding to your collection. Um, so this is a really good example of one of, one of the reds. Um, and this one was probably done around the 70s, 70 to 73, somewhere in there is when they were doing the, the red colors. This is a color called mocha. And mocha is a really interesting one too, because if you look what, uh, you know, what you see here is it's sort of a beigey brown, and then it's dripped with sort of a darker, darker brown. One of my favorite colors is this pewter color. I've yet to find it out in the wild when I'm picking, but it is really quite dramatic. It kind of looks like pewter metal. Um, and so that's another one that you might see out there and, and not realize that it's actually Blue Mountain Pottery. Now this is a color called Slate. Um, really love this color. It's sort of blue within the sort of browns on top black brown drip um, and here's a good example of something that other than you know the figurines that they did as well other colors that you'll see is harvest golden brown that's another one that you'll see out there as well um, and I wanted to show you another one that I have this one is a really rare glaze called celadon isn't he handsome, this owl? So now he's hollow again, but that this is a, I'm going to bring him up close so you can sort of see the, the glaze on him. So he's got a bit of, he's sort of that green celadon, and then he's got some drip of brown. Okay. Turn him around here so you can see the back of him as well. Isn't he gorgeous? I just love him. He's just such a sweet one. So he's going to stay in my collection for now, but I might be able to part with them. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. The most desirable glazes are Harvest Gold and the Cobalt Blue. So people do really quite like this blue in, in addition to the black or brown. There are some people that just collect the black and brown because they like to have, you know, everything kind of uniform. Um, and, uh, but, you know, the slate and the mochas and the reds, 
you know, two are are sort of less common, and so they can can be more popular and therefore, you know, worth more money. Um, <clears throat> now, the other thing I wanted to talk about a bit was the marks. So as you saw, as you saw, there's the diversity of the marks. There's also the hang tags, and I'm going to show you that now too. So here's a, um, an image where I've sort of captured different um, snapshots of the logo. So you can see the one that I was showing you earlier, the three trees and the word Canada, but also BMP Canada, and it's written in kind of different ways. Um, you can see, even see it fully spelt out and the model number on there. Um, and then they're also, if they didn't have, you know, if, if, there isn't a solid base to it, then that would have one of these stickers or perhaps one of these stickers or even just a hang tag. So that's why it kind of makes it a little bit challenging to identify. And the other thing that kind of makes it a little bit more challenging as well is that there were other potteries that around the same time that kind of were doing things in the same kind of vein. So here's another example of a pottery that was around the same time um, and has connections to Blue Mountain and that's why the, the design is a bit similar. So this piece when I picked it up I thought it was Blue Mountain but when I turned it over I see that it's CCC Canada, and CCC Canada stands for the, the Canadian Ceramic Craft Pottery. And this uh, pottery was also in Collingwood, Ontario. It started in the 60s, 1960, and by uh, Dennis Toop. And Dennis Toop was a mold maker for Blue Mountain. So he started up his own business. And so the designs that came out of CCC are quite similar to Blue Mountain, but there are some distinct differences. Um, when you get to sort of look at the different pieces, you can see. And it changed names to Rainbow Ceramics in about 1966. Um, and there's, there is a, a Rainbow Ceramics mark, but all, also they just kept marking it with CCC as well. So you might see those out and about as well when you're when you're looking and you think oh I think that's Blue Mountain and then you'll be surprised that it's not. So thanks so much for joining me. I hope you really enjoyed this and is there a piece that maybe you liked more than another on this and that I in the showcase? Let me know in the comments below. I really do appreciate you watching and don't forget to like this video with a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And you know I love ya. Mwah. See you next time.